In the intricate world of our digestive system, the small intestine plays a starring role. It's where most of our nutrient absorption happens. But like any star, it thrives best with a supporting cast. Enter our gut bacteria. While the colon or large intestine is bustling with bacterial activity, the small intestine prefers a quieter scene with fewer bacterial guests. But sometimes the balance is disrupted. When too many bacteria decide to crash the small intestine's party, we have a situation called SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So what causes the unwanted gathering? There are several culprits. Now, with this bacterial overgrowth, the small intestine struggles to efficiently absorb nutrients. The bacteria also ferment the food we eat, producing gas. This leads to the common symptoms of SIBO. Hi, my name is Dr. Aria Missmer, functional medicine practitioner, doctor of physical therapy, and registered dietitian, and I'm going to talk with you today about some of the common symptoms of SIBO. Up to 84% of cases of IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, are in fact associated with SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So you can appreciate that most of the SIBO symptoms are going to fall under the IBS umbrella. Because symptoms from SIBO are arising because of the bacterial fermentation in the small intestine, Things like bloating and flatulence or gas are very common. It is actually one of the most common symptoms associated with SIBO. And most SIBO patients, and if you have this, you can totally appreciate this, is that you feel like you might wake up okay, and then as the day goes on, you tend to get just more and more bloated, and especially after meals specifically two to three hours after meals. This also can lead to abdominal distension and you can have reflux and even things like burping, some of your upper GI symptoms because of what's happening in the small intestine. Additionally, you can have constipation and or diarrhea. So if you have methane dominant SIBO, for example, you may experience more constipation. If you have hydrogen or hydrogen sulfide, dominant SIBO, you may experience more diarrhea. And of course it can be mixed because this is also associated with pelvic floor function. Because the small intestine is the site for absorption of nutrients, we can experience nutrient deficiencies. So things like our iron, for example, vitamin B12, and even things like D, so our fat soluble vitamins. We can also see malabsorption, so we can see fat in the stool. And a really common thing that you will experience is increased food sensitivities, food intolerances, and even food allergies. So as the process of SIBO continues to perpetuate, so we have this overgrowth of bacteria, it's affecting the way that we're able to absorb carbohydrates, specifically fermentable carbohydrates, but it's also creating an inflammatory cycle. So what happens is, is we are going to release endotoxins so this can create localized inflammation in the gut, for example, viscerally, but it can also attribute to systemic inflammation. So for one person that might present as shoulder pain and another person that might present as an autoimmune disease. So as this inflammation continues to persist, this can cause a whole range of other symptoms. So it can cause things like brain fog. It can cause things like other cognitive impairments like memory. It can cause things like thyroid issues, so hormone imbalances. Excessive or persistent inflammation is associated with a whole host of chronic diseases. Because SIBO is linked to leaky gut, this is where the systemic inflammation can occur. It's also where we can begin to see pain, so lower abdominal pain, upper abdominal pain, and pain in the abdomen, once again viscerally, can be associated with this inflammation. Having SIBO myself and treating hundreds of patients with SIBO, I can say that each person presents uniquely. Because each of you are unique, your biochemistry is unique, and so because of that, it can affect you very differently. But it can really be debilitating and affect your life in so many different ways, whether that's lack of energy to do the things that you wanna do, fear of eating and fear of how that's going to make you feel, whether you're, it's affecting your body image and having this constant bloating or being fearful of when you're gonna be able to go to the bathroom. It can be things that can significantly affect your life. So please know that there is hope to be able to understand what you have and how to treat it. So if you wanna learn more about diagnosing and treating your SIBO, please check out the other videos.